Welcome to Lee WTV. I'm Ed. Today, I'm going to be talking really just to the English speaking viewers who are learning Chinese because there are a number of challenges, as I'm sure you've noticed so far, there are a number of challenges for people who speak Western languages when learning to speak Chinese. First of all, we are teaching Mandarin. Mandarin is the official language of China, known as Putonghua. Now, most Americans probably are also familiar with, or at least have heard of, Cantonese. There are actually, in China, well over 200 different. So we are focusing on what is, as I said, the official language of China, Mandarin. Now, let me just say in the beginning, too, that there's a difference between a dialect and an accent. Many people in America have accents, no matter where you go. I happen to be from New England myself, so I have a little bit of a New England accent. For example, if I have a question, I ask. Not everybody does. Most people ask. The same thing is true in China. Uh, there are different accents and there are different dialects as well. Now, an accent really is just a difference in pronunciation. A-S-K. Everybody spells it the same way. Uh, the grammar surrounding it is the same, but the pronunciation can be different. Now, when we're talking about a dialect, we're talking not only about pronunciation, but we're also talking about grammar and spelling. So, as I said, there are many different dialects in Chinese, but we're focusing on Mandarin. That's the first challenge. And by the way, I hope you think of these as challenges, not as obstacles. One of the other challenges is reading Chinese as you learn to speak it. Now, I think that probably for most Westerners, at least for myself, it's always been easier for me if I'm learning a foreign language, if I can see it written. That way, if I have a written manuscript in front of me, I can practice. I can read the words and say them over and over again and learn the vocabulary. Not so with Chinese. The Chinese don't use the Roman alphabet that we use. They use their own kind of pictographic system. Take a look. This is Chinese spelled in Chinese characters. Could you read that? Could you use that as a study guide? Probably not. Here now is the word Chinese, Putonghua, written in something called Pinyin. Now, Pinyin is a system that was developed by Chinese linguists back in the 1950s so that there would be a Romanized version of the Chinese language. By the way, pinyin is taught in Chinese schools. In fact, Chinese children learn to write pinyin before they learn how to write Chinese characters. So pinyin is good news for you and good news for me. Now I'd like to talk just briefly about pinyin. We'll have another lesson in the future that goes into more depth. But for the moment, Pinyin gives you an opportunity as a Western person, as I said, to read the Chinese in the same kind of characters, the same kind of letters that you're used to. So it makes it easier for you to practice. However, it's not as simple as it seems. You may have noticed as we're, we, we use Pinyin when we're translating, you may have noticed these accent marks that you'll see all over the place. That's because another one of the challenges in Chinese is tones. There are different tones of voice that are used. We'll get into that later. But for now, those little accent marks that you see in the pinyin all have to do with tone. And there's also a difference in pronunciation. So that's one of the keys to learning about pinyin is learning the pronunciation. I'd like to tell you an interesting story. When Lee first came to America, I introduced her to a friend of mine in Cleveland, and he got all excited. He said, oh, wait, I know some Chinese. And he pulled out a little paper from a fortune cookie that he had saved, and he looked at Lee and he said, 
bang, bang, tang. And she looked at him like, what? That's Chinese? I took the piece of paper from him, and I read it, and I said, oh, you mean bang, bang, tang. And then Lee knew exactly what he was talking about. Lollipop. A lollipop is a bang, bang, tang. It's not a bang, bang, tang. But most Americans, when they see A-N-G, they pronounce it ang. But in Chinese, it's a soft A, bang. That's easy for me because I'm from New England and I ask questions instead of asking questions. But that's one of the keys to learning pinyin is learning the pronunciation. Because some of the consonants, as well as the vowels and the vowel combinations, are pronounced differently than what we would normally pronounce as we saw them written. Now, to get back to accents for just a moment, what I'd like to do is to have Lee demonstrate something for us. She's going to say hello the way it would be said from in three different regions in China. Ni hao. Ni ho. Ni hao. Now, I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information in this particular lesson. So it's it's we'll keep it relatively short at this point. Just keep in mind that when you're learning any new language, there are challenges. There are things that, there are sounds, for example, that the Chinese have that we don't have. There are sounds that we have that the Chinese don't have. For example, TH. There are no words with, with a TH sound in China. So Chinese people often have a great deal of difficulty saying those kinds of words. This, that, and the other thing turn into this, that, and the other thing. The letter X, for example. Our dog is named Xiao Xiao. Here's how you would spell his name in pinyin. Now, if you knew nothing about Chinese, how would you pronounce a name like this? Think about the word or the name Xerox. There are two different pronunciations for the letter Z X in Xerox. One is like a Z and the other is like a KS. Well, actually, neither of those fit Xiao Xiao in in pinyin, in Chinese, the letter X is pronounced very much like SH. That's just one example. So there's a lot ahead. As you're looking at you, as you're going through these different conversations in Chinese with us, and you see the pinyin down the bottom, do your best at this point. Later, we'll have more videos that will talk specifically about some of these challenges in Chinese. In the meantime, Good luck. We hope you're enjoying the series. Jio. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. That way you won't miss anything and your ability to speak Chinese will become more and more fluent as we go through the series. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. We'll see you again.